Hey, this is Urbana Supernova with a sequel video for no apparent reason. <laughs> so representing the year 2020, uh, starting off the new decade. Thought I'd do another video just for fun, kind of an updated tour. Talk about a couple things real fast. Um, just for my own personal private vault, again. Uh, so yeah, here's the room now. It's a little bit more uh, shaped up since the last time I made a video in 2018. So it's... Uh, Currently, what's the date today? June 29th, 2020. So here we are, we finally got uh, my wife Monica put some puzzles together. So she's made uh, my Star Wars wall beginning. And she's actually right over here, if you look, she is uh, doing a puzzle that she hasn't finished yet with uh, Kylo and Rey. Uh, right now we got the Han Solo, Chewbacca, droids, Yoda. Got a Mario Odyssey thing on the wall now, which is good. That was a puzzle too that she completed. This is not a puzzle. This is uh, the first thing that came up here, the uh, Star Wars thing. But uh, yep, since you last looked, I guess I replaced the 2020 or the 2016 New Year's glasses with the 2021. It's been a really weird year, uh, as we all know, uh, with COVID and you know uh, social upheaval and all that. <laughs> but uh, 2020 is an interesting year. Uh, but it's a good time to be home and play some video games, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, I got this cool picture last year, 2019, with uh, with the Emperor at the Star Wars convention in Chicago. I really liked that man. Like, and he said something to me. He's like, he's like, I came up with my hoodie, put my hood on, and I was like, all black. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to take this picture. And he goes, my my, aren't we wearing the correct attire? And I was like, oh, oh you know, <laughs> it kind of like got to me a little bit. Um, I still have my Yoda up here. Put that outside. Uh, <laughs> some stupid little uh, C-3PO head. Uh, I got the uh, Metal of Yavin on there and uh, over there for put it on this little bopper. Oh, man, there's r 2 d Maybe it'll be like the last video and everything will start falling apart. Uh, got the I got my popcorn buckets all... <laughs> <laughs> the popcorn bucket. Uh, I got the Rise of Skywalker one. Kind of completed the set for the for the uh, um, the uh, the decade Star Wars movie. I'll just switch off for a while. <laughs> yeah, he goes, I'll just switch off for a while. I was like, is this not gonna stop? Uh, still got my paintball mask up here. I got some books. Uh, as you can see, I've got I probably added a few things that came with the uh, Jedi Knight uh, special edition. The or Star Wars uh, Jedi Fallen Order Special Edition. Sorry, not Jedi Knight. Uh, Fallen Order Special Edition. And that is Darth Revan from the Knights of the Old Republic games and Thrawn. Obviously, all these characters are not even in the movies, but they're all extra Star Wars characters that are really cool. Uh, so I kind of lined everything up a little bit down here. Got everything kind of finalized. This is probably the... I'm probably never going to add any more to my Star Wars figures. I had to move... Uh, Moved my books out of the way and moved them into the retro room because I had to make room for VR. So this cool PSVR, I, I, I'm a big fan of virtual reality, as you can probably see by my shirt. Uh, Mass Effect, or Mass Effect, I keep saying Mass Effect. Mass VR, uh, it's just a place here in Bloomington. There's only two of them in the state of Illinois right now. So we're lucky that we got one here. There's one up in Chicago land area and there's one down here in central Illinois. And we're going to it tonight to play some uh, arena VR. So that'll be really fun with the family uh got everything set up here remember i said i had skipped the wii u generation i actually did end up getting a wii u to kind of make a zelda machine out of it and i finally got xenoblade chronicles x and i'm excited to play that because i have not played it yet this game came out in 2015 and i still haven't got to it yet but i i can do it now because i have a wii u finally i had skipped that but i found a good good deal on one so i added that to the collection so the ps ps4 pro the Wii U, uh, Turbo Graphics Mini, awesome, awesome little system here. I'm so excited to have that. I always wanted a Turbo Graphics machine when I was a kid. Only one kid in my neighborhood had it, uh, and I played Bonk's Adventure, Eastbooks One and Two, which Eastbooks One and Two is one of my favorite games of all time. And just memories of playing at Steve's house, uh, Steve Miller, but kid in my neighborhood. But he was the only kid in the neighborhood with a Turbo Graphics machine, and. Uh, now I have one, so I have a, you know, it's, it's great to have the Mini that has a, a bunch on it. Uh, some PC Engine games from Japan on it. Uh, Neo Geo Mini. 
play some Neo Geo. That, that was an expensive system back in the day, so not many kids could afford. <laughs> so my parents wouldn't get it for me. They, they said, you know, be happy with the Nintendo and Sega that you have, you know. So I, you know, I was lucky enough to have an NES and a Genesis. So Neo Geo was out of the stratosphere for some people. But now the Neo Geo Mini, so you can hook this up. You can play it like a joystick, like an arcade, or you can hook it up to the TV and play it. There's a lot of good fighting games and things on the Neo Geo Mini. Uh, the, the PS Mini, which I've, all these minis, the Genesis Mini, Super Nintendo Mini, and the PlayStation Mini, I've, I've, I've kind of like put hack cheat on a couple of these, so I have a lot more games on them. I haven't messed with the Genesis much, but I was able to get like Snatcher CD, Sega CD and stuff on the PS Mini, so it made it more worth it, because that was probably the, my, I love the PS1 as a system, but it was my least favorite Mini, because they had a weird selection of games, everybody knows the problems with that, but. Uh, it's a really good system now because it has a good, some good ROMs on it. <laughs> but uh, PS3 is still there. I moved the Xbox 360 upstairs and I moved the Nintendo, the NES Mini upstairs just to kind of make room and for some entertainment on the upstairs television. Uh, the Xbox 360 is up there as well. So, well, I think I already said that. <laughs> Xbox 360, uh, the Nintendo Wii, and the NES Mini are all upstairs. Oh, not even in the retro room, just for room. So my Switch collection is growing up here. Uh, I got, you know, moved some things around. Got uh, some DS and 3DS stuff here. GameCube, Wii, uh, Super Nintendo and Genesis at the bottom. All those custom made boxes that we saw before, which I still love these custom made boxes. I mean, look how cool these things are, you know? Uh, I showed you the Earthbound before. You know, I even got stuff like Turtles in Time, you know? These were custom made boxes that aren't the original boxes, but they keep my cartridges in them because I had the cartridges loose. But yeah, I mean, these are really cool. I, I think I showed the Earthbound one last, in the last video. No need to go through that again. But uh, I've updated my figures. You want to scan those. Uh, I got my Final Fantasy stuff moved up to the top uh, since it's my favorite series. That just came, that Cloud Strife on the bike just came out this year with the Final Fantasy VII Remake Special Edition. I loved the Final Fantasy VII Remake, man. It was awesome. Awesome stuff. Uh, up top, you got Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man was probably the best superhero game I ever played, even ahead of the Batman series in my book. Shantae, Sonic. Uh, down here, I got all my, most of my Amiibos and stuff. Some new Amiibos, like si I love that they have a Simon Belmont Amiibo because I'm a huge Castlevania fan. Um, God of War and all that. Uh, Siri with the Witcher has put down there with Cuphead and all that stuff. And then my, my newest thing, and probably my last collector's edition, because I'm just, just for the sake of room, I got the Last of Us Part Two collector's edition. Look at that beautiful statue there with Ellie playing guitar. I uh, really love that. Um, so that might be the last collector's edition item I actually display, uh, just because I said I'd cut myself off and not uh, get any more huge collector's editions just for the sake of space. Um, my PlayStation area is all set up here. I stuck my 2016 Cubs World Series champ stuff over here. I got Benny the Bull over here. So little extra things that aren't video game things just because I like the Bulls and the Cubs. But uh, kind of moved uh, Morgana from Persona in there. Uh, still still the, the PlayStation games haven't moved. PS2 games are up here now. PS3 is right there. PS4 is all down here. I think my PS4 collection has grown considerably more than anything else. So I probably have more physical PS4 games than anything. Obviously, the future is digital. And we'll see, you know, the PlayStation 5 has been revealed. We'll be coming out. I'm excited about that. Xbox Series X. We'll probably put those over there somewhere. Uh, they, they seem to stand tall, so they'll probably be off to the corners here when I finally get the PS5 and the Series X. So, to represent 2020's gaming, you know, right? I uh, got some stuff, like all my VR stuff here. You know, Astrobot, this is the last game I 100%ed, uh, and it's my 90th. 100% game if you count all DLC uh, achievements and trophies. Uh, I'm, I'm going for, my whole personal goal is to complete 100, because I like the number 100, complete 100 games at 100%. And that includes all DLC achievements, trophies, everything. So obviously it doesn't, I can't count Nintendo or Sega games that I love. It can only count PlayStation and Xbox because that's the only thing that really has a system that keeps track of achievements and trophies. So, but Astrobot, I just completed, just got done, and this is a fantastic game. Probably one of my favorite 3D platformers I've ever played. It is impressive in VR. Astrobot, I highly recommend Astrobot. Uh, Sega Saturn stuff. 
finally got myself a Saturn. So I do have a very small Saturn collection, but it's very valuable. And you know what? I've always, always wanted a copy of Panzer Dragoon Saga. This is definitely my most expensive physical game that I own. This thing is rare. You know, they, if you know the story behind it, they lost the source code. Sega didn't have the code anymore, so they never, they never ported this to any other systems, and it's one of the best RPGs I've ever played. And uh, this game's going for way too high a price online right now. It'd be insane for anybody to actually buy it, so uh, I'm lucky to own this. It's uh, Panzer Dragon Saga. I love the Panzer Dragon series. I got Zway, and I got the first one in uh, Orta on the Xbox, because uh, the, you know, and all that stuff. Uh, the first one kind of comes as an unlocked feature of Orta. Uh, the Knights in the Dream special controller in box. That's cool. This was Final Fantasy XI, my PS2 copy. I just didn't know where else to put it. Even though it's kind of defunct on the PS2 now, because uh, it was an online game. And, but you can still play it on PC, I believe. But I have good memories of this from the early 2000s. Uh, X, original Xbox titles, Xbox One, Xbox 360. All my Blu-rays and stuff are now down here. I kind of expanded the space a bit. Uh, I got, you know... For, and I, I got some room over here for when, if I start getting more physical PS5 and Xbox Series X stuff. Uh, just threw some of my Nintendo physical cartridges here. Uh, Ninja Gaiden series, you know, because I got to have it. Ninja Gaiden 3, I finally, as a kid, because Ninja Gaiden 1 was one of my favorite games of all time. When I was a kid, I never beat Ninja Gaiden 3. And I finally beat this game last year as an adult, as a 40-year-old adult. Finally took the time to beat Ninja Gaiden 3. Uh, originally, and that was such a satisfying feeling. It's a very hard game, <laughs> but I finally did it. Um, and yeah, so that's so I got some more space. I'll probably move the movies over there when I make a PS5 and Series X section. Uh, I put the Pit Boy here, the Fallout Pit Boy, where I could put the my subwoofer on top for the sound uh, for my television. So I'll go scan the retro room real quick, I guess, and then I'll talk about my ten hardest completions, and then I'll wrap it up. So let's let's check it out right here. It's not Father's Day anymore. It's still got the kids area, of course. You got the frozen castle and all that jazz. And I don't have the door knocker on the door anymore because it was leaving too many marks. <laughs> but still use the treadmill, run, run a couple times a week, you know. Run two miles every once in a while to stay in shape. But now over here we got the posters are the the posters haven't changed much. I do want to put up this poster still. Because I love the East series a lot. So I do want to still put up this East Origin poster. I just haven't put it up yet. It's kind of just hanging out down here. <laughs> uh, like I said, I finally got my Sega Saturn down here. Finally got a, a, a new GameCube down here because I was playing my GameCube games on the Wii for so long. So I finally got an actual GameCube to represent that. And, uh, you know, the NES is down here, all that. The PlayStations, the 64, the Xbox. The Sega Saturn, I had to put a new battery in. I'm so glad I got this Sega Saturn working. So the only thing I'm really missing right now that I really want from my childhood was a because I used to have a Sega Master System as a kid uh, at Grandma and Grandpa's, and I don't have a Sega Master System anymore, and that's the only thing that I'm really missing that I really want is the Sega Master System. But I mean, I have most of the games I can play on other devices, so it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, Turtles, all this stuff from like '80s, '90s kind of childhood stuff, and the SpongeBob stuff for. And adventure time were important for the kids, and that kind of represent, uh, kind of represent the kids there. Uh, over here, I keep my sword. Uh, you know, I gotta keep my sword up. It's very sharp. This is my, this is my weapon of choice. But uh, it's got a sheath on it right now, and I need to pull it out. But I'll keep that out of the way. Uh, gotta keep that out of the way of the little ones, you know. Um, I kind of organized everything up here. This is where all my boxes are for my special editions, my Zelda, Last of Us 2, Persona 5. Uh, I even got the box for the old Nintendo Action set up there, so that's good. We are. So everything's kind of in order. Here's where I put the books now. I moved the books down here. These are cool. These Final Fantasy compendiums or Ultimania archives are awesome. They, they go in detail about every Final Fantasy title. Look at that. That's just fantastic. Hyrule Historia, the Halo Mythos, Star Wars Spider-Man uh, lore, uh, Witcher lore, uh, yeah, uh, Dragon Quest book. I love the Dragon Quest series, so that was cool to get that art book. Um, yeah, I got my D&D stuff stacked up there, so that's kind of what that is now. Rock Band's over there. The drums aren't working anymore, but yeah, I guess I'll just talk. We'll, we'll leave this and talk about my uh, 
top 10 hardest completions right now. And there's also, uh, like I said, I'm going for 100 uh, Xbox and PlayStation titles. I had 100% for trophies and achievements. Research in the math, and the, these are the hardest ones probably uh, that I've come up with. I mean, the, what I say, what I mean by the hardest is probably harder ones, but the one that the least amount of people have completed by percentage. So, like for instance, like number ten, I had uh, I have a list because I don't have it memorized like I do my other stuff. But uh, when, from the research I had done, number ten was uh, Galaxy, which I don't have a physical copy of. But Galaxy was a really cool game. It was uh, set in space, kind of like old, like 70s, 80s anime style, and it was very challenging. Uh, I think it had like a, maybe a three, it says 3.31, whoop, that's not it, 2.67 completion. People that played it, only 2% of people have finished, got all the trophies in it. Galaxy is just, I mean, you're shooting asteroids, it's really fast paced, it's like arcade, almost like a twin stick feel, shooter feel. Uh, good game, like the anime style was really good. Uh, I, I really like Galaxy Z. Galaxy Z the Dimensional. Uh, a lot of people haven't played it, but uh, yeah, it's on the PS4 and I, I recommend that. Um, number uh, eight was, uh, or number, number number nine, it would be uh, Assassin's Creed Revelations. I used to be really good at the multiplayer on this game uh, before they got rid of the Assassin's Creed multiplayer. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's... I haven't played the last few because they were releasing them yearly. So I, I'm kind of behind on my Assassin's Creed playing because they just kept calling, coming out and coming out. But I was super heavy into uh, Revelations at the beginning of the 2010s and super into Assassin's Creed 3. All, all of the, the whole Ezio trilogy, I was really, or I shouldn't say Ezio, with the Desmond storyline and all that and the Ezio trilogy, but this is part of the Ezio trilogy. But the multiplayer was really good, which made it a rare completion. Because a lot of there's a lot of multiplayer achievements that but I was pretty good at that. So uh, number eight would have been uh, Witcher Three, which is my favorite game of all time. I've talked about that before. Uh, Witcher Three, all the DLC uh, and everything was completed. It, it's probably the most time I've ever put into a single title uh, for a single player game. Anyway, uh, I probably put more hours into maybe some competitive multi, you know, competitive games online or competitive games but for a single player game I put 200 hours into The Witcher so that was a lot of time. Uh, number seven uh, was Cuphead. I 100%ed Cuphead. That was you know extremely awesome awesome art style if you don't know about Cuphead. Uh, Cuphead was a bullet hell style uh, 2D side scroller that, man, that had an old 1930s cartoon feel to it and it was balls of the wall hard at times man it was it was very challenging. Uh, I 100% of it beat it on expert, you know, beat the devil on expert. That game was really, really fun. Uh, I can't wait till that deal. We have been waiting for the last course DLC to come out for like years. It's been out for three years and we haven't got that DLC yet, but maybe I'll take away my hundred percentage once that DLC comes out and I'll have to do it again, but we'll see. Uh, number six, uh, let me look at the sheet here. It was Assassin's Creed 3, another Assassin's Creed title. This is even rare. Uh, this took a lot of time to complete. A lot of people um, don't, you know, it's not, it's, not, it's not a lot of people's favorite in this series, but I, I really like it a lot. It took place in the American Revolution. Uh, it had the multiplayer aspect. Uh, the multiplayer aspect was awesome, just like it carried over from Revelations and Brotherhood and all that. And I was just stealthily stealthily taking people out at a high rate and getting all the trophies in that game so that worked out uh then army of two i don't know this is an older title from 2008 army of two uh, had an achievement in there where you had to like make a lot of money 
I can't remember, it's been so many years, but I'd make a lot of money online by winning matches and things. And I 100%ed all the DLC and everything, and that was a challenging one. There was a lot of, a lot of these had multiplayer achievements on there, and I think that's what makes the percentages hard. If you complete those multiplayer tasks, then that's, that's pretty much giving you the rarity of achievement. Army of Two was good like that. Army of Two is a co-op game. You can play with you and another person, uh, third person shooter style, you know, cover based system, kind of like a Gears of War or Mass Effect, the way it, the way it played. But uh, I had a good time with that. I, that was actually the game I was playing with another person online, one of my buddies, and when we found out Osama Bin Laden was killed <laughs> back in 2011. So uh, we were working on 100% in that game, and I remember getting the news about Osama Bin Laden, so I have a good memory from that. Weird, weird things you remember sometimes. <laughs> Uh, number four, four uh, was Red Dead Redemption. Uh, I've talked extensively about this game, and this has a, they, this game had a it's so rare of a hundred percent because this has a lot of multiplayer online achievements again and a lot of DLC. I spent a lot of time in 2010 working on that game, and it was one of my favorites. I've played with some great Xbox players, uh, like Randall Thor, and uh, people that are really highly. Um, high up the Xbox chain. I think he's one of the top four or five players in the world on Xbox. <laughs> Overall gamer score and all that. So I, we played together on that. And uh, Red Dead Redemption, we, we tackled it all. And, you know, obviously it's one of my top ten games of all time, so I don't need to go too much on about that. But uh, Connect Adventures. Connect Adventures. Uh, that's another uh, highly completed game by me. Now, it sounds funny, but it's actually very challenging. And me and my wife, Monica, worked on it because uh, you got to get physical with Connect. You know, you're jumping, you're doing all kinds of workouts and stuff. Uh, Connect Adventures used the Xbox 360 Connect, and you had to get, uh, to get 100% on it, I think you had to get a platinum medal in every event. So we did that together. So it was a good memory that I share of gaming with my wife. We don't have too many of those together. And she helped me get that. So Connect Adventures uh, has a... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Connect Adventures has a 1.60 uh, completion rating. So only 1%, less than 2% of people have complete 100% of the Connect Adventures. So that's high up there. What else have I not talked to? Did I skip over something? It seemed like I skipped over something. Maybe not. Uh, my second most highly, my second rarest completion is Mortal Kombat X, or Mortal Kombat, also known as Mortal Kombat 10. Uh, fighting game online, you had to do stuff. One of my favorite fighting games, one of my favorite games of all time. You had to do stuff like win 10 ranked matches in a row online. Not easy to do, but I pulled it off uh, and played a lot of that back in 2015. Uh, Mortal Kombat, you know, it was probably the best. Mortal Kombat has the best storyline of any fighting game, obviously. They put a lot of work into that and uh, created up here. Uh, comes out of Chicago, so it's kind of a almost like a home a home thing, uh, home state thing. So got that completed. Uh, and then my, my most rarest completion that I saw, which it says 0.57% of people have completed this game. And that was on the PS3, The Last of Us. Also one of my most favorite games of all time uh, in my top 25. Uh, the Last of Us was just brilliant. And you know, you had to beat, 100% that game, you had to beat it on, I think it was like, I don't know if it's Survivor Plus or Survivor Plus Plus or something like that. The hardest setting you can beat it on. So you had to do the tough, stealthy single player sections. And you had to do a multiplayer, which was very hard to get. Like, you know, three or more kills on this map or three or more kills on this map in, in a row or something. It, there was some really stringent things, but I became very good at that game back in 2013. Um, I think they, when they re-released Last of Us uh, for the PS4 as Last of Us Remastered, they made those DLC trophy requirements easier. So anybody that completed on the PS4 had a lot easier time than they did on the PS3. So that's why this is, you know, like I said, 0.57% of people have 100% of this game. So, and I'm one of them. So half a percent, uh, last of us on the PlayStation 3. So those are my, like, probably my most, my rarest 100% completions. Uh, as you probably saw the list of the other ones, so. Special shout out to Demon Souls and the whole Dark Souls trilogy that I completed. And Halo Reach, which I completed at 100%, which is my proudest, uh, personal proudest 
three only three percent of gamers completed Halo Reach. So special shout out to those games. Showed you the game room and uh, everything, and I wanted to update for 2020 and make, make a sequel video just for for shits and giggles. Uh, might have to edit that part out for the kids, but uh, so until until any other time, I guess this is Urbana Supernova signing off.